Hello, Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will look at the topic of lightning over voltages. Insulation requirements are essential in HV system and equipment design. So, in power system operation, during the operation, all insulations have to be stand. First one is continuous system working voltages. So that is the operating uh, system voltage, 33 kV, 132 kV, and so on. So that is the continuous system working voltages. And also, um, the insulation must able to withstand over voltages. This over voltages due to switching and lightning for example so these over voltages always have much higher magnitude or amplitude than the working voltage and it very rapidly with time very happens in very short time so why do we need insulation why is it important so insulation uh, is important because it it uh, for public and utility personal safety provides safety for the uh, public and even the personnel that are working on the system um, also insulation uh, ensure that the current flows only along the conductor there's no if for for good insulation there will no very very little leakage current okay um, also insulation uh, is required to prevent damage to the equipment due to high voltages uh, in particular prevent or reduce permanent damage to the high voltage equipment so uh, one of the reasons we need the insulation is to protect equipment due to uh, high voltage and even over voltages um, so as engineers uh, we must consider all sources of electrical stresses uh, that may be occurred in the operating system, in the power system. So besides the normal power frequency vo uh, voltage, the power frequency, uh, there are several types of over voltages. One is temporary over voltages. Okay, this can be produced by faults in the system. Sometimes when the generator, uh, when over speed, it can temporarily increase the voltage, ferro resonance, and etc. Um, second of type of over voltages is lightning over voltages that we will go into detail in this video. Um, so it produced by lightning strikes. Second is uh, switching over voltages. Um, as produced by switching breakers or disconnecting switch uh, in the power system, the substation. When you do switching, uh, it can cause switching over voltages in the system. So over the years, many concepts and industrial standards have been developed to help design engineers to ensure that the HB system design can work safely and reliability, reliably in the internal power system. Um, so in normal power system operation, usually the voltage will not go more than 10% of the rated values. Okay, that is normal. Uh, still can operate within 10% extra, uh, plus minus 10%. Um, however, if the voltage appear more than this, then this is called as over voltages, right? Temporary switching and lightning. Um, so, uh, typically, the peak magnitude and shape of waveforms are given in the table. You can see in the table. Um, switching um, you can go two to four times uh, the voltage. Atmospheric uh, direct lightning strike can go even higher than four times of the of the magnitude um, and you can see that the uh, uh, time duration for switching very short only appear in one millisecond roughly in one millisecond um, for lightning strike uh, appear in the system at very very short time one to ten microsecond 
and you can see the different uh, the, uh, the characteristic of the uh, over voltages by right? switching over voltages the damping is medium uh, or atmospheric or lightning uh, over voltages damping is high then we will look at this uh, in much further detail after this um, so this is a uh, important uh, a chart to show you the different characteristic of uh, over voltages so here we have system voltage okay with magnitude per unit of one okay so you can uh, the duration is is operating all the time uh, temporary over voltages usually occur slightly above one pu one per unit of the system voltage and the uh, duration is uh, last in the seconds uh, minutes right due to faults right and then switching over voltages uh, switching over voltages the magnitude can go up to four times of the pu voltage uh, however it happens only up to milliseconds and if you look at uh, lightning over voltages lightning over voltages um, appear in microsecond much faster um, so only appear in the system very very quick microsecond however the the magnitude is very very high um, and then we have another um, over voltages it is VFFO very fast front over voltage so this is fast front over voltage slow front over voltage temporary over voltage so for the, the last one very fast front over voltages they are very very quick however the magnitude is very um, not as high as uh, lightning over voltages never mind we'll look at this uh, in, in with this video or the next video um, so this is also another uh, table you can find in IEC standard 60071-2 so the previous uh, chart the previous figure you can also find from IEC sorry 60071 uh, so in this uh, table you can see the different types of uh, over voltages so lightning over voltage um, switching over voltage a very fast front over voltage uh, here in less than 100 nanosecond fast front so far so far and, and uh, temporary over voltage as well so let's go into detail on lightning over voltages or fast front over voltage FFO uh, so brief on lightning so lightning flash typically lasts for 0 0.2 seconds so the whole thing lasts 0 0.2 seconds however we're looking at impulse the impulse itself is in microsecond okay usually made of several shorter discharges each of which uh, is each of which lasts only 10 to 50 microseconds right uh, the typical length of lightning 2 to 3 kilometers individual discharges are called strokes uh, most visible when return stroke occurs okay you can see in the figure uh, when uh, the the continuous leader reach the ground and then there's a return arc so this is usually uh, visible to our eyes most visible when return stroke occurs right Lightning mode can carry a potential difference of more than 1,000 kilovolt, more than 100,000 amps with more than 20 gigajoule of energy. So, lightning is a uh, lightning is a result of a storm, natural phenomenon. Lightning results in surges in uh, electrical power system. So the lightning can cause surges in electrical power system. Um, so the surges arise from the lightning strike to or near overhead conductors or overhead transmission line right? also known as FFO um, classified as external over voltages as they are generated by source externally okay so we have external over voltage we also have internal over voltage 
so external uh, because it's generated by external sources internal over voltages is uh, when there's over voltages generated from the internal of the power system network um, so lightning impulse is important for uh, the study of lightning impulse is important for insulation coordination design uh, system voltages um, below 300 kilovolt Okay, let's look at the generation fast front over voltage. A generation can be generated on transmission line in three different ways. So three different, <coughs> three different uh, methods on how the FFO uh, generated or appeared in the system. So first one is lightning directly strikes a phase conductor. <coughs> So when lightning directly strikes on the phase conductor, uh, this will cause flash over across the insulator, and then the voltage surge will then travel along the line and can have an impact on the substation equipment. We will look at this much further after this. There's a, a picture you, where you can uh, visualize uh, the phenomena right uh, second is a lot when lightning directly strikes a shield wire or tower so if the rise is potential tower is significant enough then a flash over to the phase conductor will occur so the keyword is black uh, sorry back flash over <coughs> and then the third one is lightning strikes to nearby ground and then induce voltage in the overhead line so this is only significant for distribution line. Okay, um, so um, this classified, this may be classified as a direct strokes when uh, when a thunder cloud directly discharges onto a transmission line, tower, or line. So this is the most severe condition, but it is rare. Um, direct strike happens when wire not well shielded okay you can see here so this is the first um, uh, method or how the lightning can uh, appear or lightning over voltages appear in the line um, so you can see here when the lightning strike the um, the, the, the phase conductor right direct stroke directly strike the phase conductor sorry this is not just not directly strike the phase conductor um so this this is this is first one when the lightning directly strike the phase conductor this is the phase conductor right this the top one is a shield wire okay shield wire um, to shield the phase conductor so the shield wire on top is purposely install to protect the, the, the phase conductor right so it is meant to uh, receive the lightning strike so that it will go uh, it will direct the surge to the ground all right but however if there are shielding shielding failure right shielding failure to the um, shield wire then the lightning will directly strike the phase conductor so this this is the first one right direct strokes when the thunder cloud directly discharge onto a transmission line lines all right all right so the second one is indirect strokes uh, so this is happen when an insulator string can also be stressed by high transient voltage uh, when a lightning stroke hits the nearby ground all right so you, the keyword here is lightning stroke hits the nearby ground so lightning stroke near the nearby ground however it can induce induce um, voltages over voltages in the phase conductor as you can see the picture here the lightning strike uh, the ground however it can induce because the um, 
the, the voltage is so high, uh, it can induce voltages to the nearby um, conductor, right? even to the shield wire and phase conductor as well. And then the third one is um, called black, uh, sorry, back flashover. So back flashover if happens when a direct strike to to a tower occurs. All right. So the tower is grounded. The shield wire is also grounded. So when the lightning strike the tower, um, the tower will have to carry large impulse current. Right. Uh, but if the footing, the tower footing resistance is high, then the potential of the tower rises, and then this can cause insulators to back flash over. So this is uh, what happens uh, when uh, back back flash over occurs. As you can see here, the top of the tower has shield wire, right? So the lightning strike the tower or the shield wire uh, supposed to go straight to the ground however because of the resistance of the tower is high can cause a uh, large potential to the uh, to the tower and then can cause the flash over occurs across the insulator so that the surge will jump into the phase conductor um, so this is the third one, back flash over, right? You can see here the line strike the tower, and then this tower footing resistance. However, because the, if the resistance is high, it can cause flash over occurs across the insulator. We go into the can jump or go into the phase conductor as well. Alright, so this is the second one, induced or indirect stroke. So the lightning strike, the, tower, uh, the, the, the tree or anything nearby, not directly to the tower or the, to the first uh, phase conductor. However, it can induce voltages in the system as well. Um, so let's uh, look at indirect lightning stroke. So this is the manifestation at a distance of a direct lightning stroke. So direct lightning stroke at a distance, right? so we can cover two aspects. Um, conducted surges rise in earthing potential. So let's look at conducted surges. Okay, so these are the result of an impact on overhead lines and may reach several hundreds um, kilo volts. Now, if the impact occurs on an MV network. The transmission by the transformer to LV takes place by capacitive coupling. So this is the keyword here, capacitive coupling. So this is uh, another example of how um, lightning indirect lightning stroke can also occur. All right. So so this is the transformer. This is the primary circuit. This is secondary circuit. Alright, so these two are not connected. However, when there is a lightning strike or lightning stroke to the uh, primary system, to the primary line, it can also tr um, transmit the surge to the secondary. So this is not directly strike to the secondary system. It is indirectly strike or uh, indirectly causing surge to the secondary system all right um, so a statistical study carried out in France shows that 91% of surges at a LV consumer do not exit 4 kV and 98% do not exit 6 kV so this is statistical um, obtained by France that uh, this happens uh, to the LV system, LV network, all right? Uh, so the search directly strike the MV network, uh, but because of uh, it can cause uh, because of capacitive coupling, it will cause surges also appear in the LV network, and however the value is very very uh, less than the MV network. Um, but still high enough 
to appear in the LV system, right? 4 kV and even up to 6 kV. And the second one, um, uh, second example of indirect lightning stroke, uh, as we have discussed uh, previously, a rise in earthing potential occurs when the lightning current flows off through the ground. So this variation in earthing potential affects installation near the lightning strikes, uh, the ground near the earthing connection. So naturally, this search also depends on the ground resistivity. So important to have good or low ground resistivity in the in the uh, installation or in the substation. Um, this often accounts for the phenomenon of animals that are indirectly struck by lightning. Indirectly struck by lightning, even a hundred meters away from the point of impact. All right, uh, a horse in a meadow or in a field may receive a difference of in potential of five hundred volt between between the between the legs. All right, so you can see here. Uh, example when uh, lightning strike uh, the tree and then at this point this is the magnitude of the search however uh, at a distance there is still um, potential in the ground uh, so because of the equipment is connected to the ground as well so it can cause surges appear in the system as well so this is Example of indirect lightning stroke. All right, the third one. All right, the third one. Um, the first one is direct lightning stroke uh, when the lightning directly strike the phase conductor due to failure in the shielding wire. Right, shielding failure the second is indirect stroke and we have two examples here of indirect um, stroke and then the third one is black uh, sorry oh, uh, mistaking the, 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 the term back flash over okay flash over appear from ground to face conductor as a reverse basically um so if lightning strikes the top tower shield of shield wire voltages are built up across the tower top and if these voltages equal or exceed the line standard atmospheric condition or critical flash over uh, of the system flash over occurs from the tower to the phase conductor you can see a lightning strike the shield wire all right supposedly go to the ground all right you can see the search travel to the heading towards the ground um, however if the design is uh, uh, design is uh, less design of the insulator is less than the requirement or if or the footing resistance is high it can cause back flash over it will jump from the tower to a, a, a flash over will occur across the insulator and jump into the phase conductor so when back flash over occurs a part of the surge current will flow to the phase conductor through the arc or through the flash across the insulator string all right It's called a shielding failure for light shield and shield wire. So this is uh, sorry, this is not under back flash over. This is for the first case, right? Directly light uh, strike the directly strike the phase conductor. So this is not uh, back flash over for an unshielded line. It's later flash over is caused by back flash. All right. Uh, for an unshielded line, insulator flash over is caused by back flash when the stroke hits the tower or by direct contact with the phase conductor. So this basically means when 
<coughs> flash over occurs in the insulator uh, one is when the lightning strike the tower or, or even when the lightning strike the phase conductor is can also cause flash over across the insulator all right i can see here lightning strike the tower uh, sorry lightning strike the conductor and then it cause flash over to the to the tower and this one when the lightning strike the shield wire it will cause also flash over to the phase conductor but this case is called back flash over because from the ground going back to the phase conductor this is flash over going from the phase conductor to the ground so this is flash over when it happens across the simulator all right so lightning over voltages pattern all right so let's look at the pattern um, generally for the test in the laboratory lightning impulse waveform shapes are taken to have a front time um, t1 from 0 0.1 microsecond to 20 microsecond and then a decay time value t2 of no more than 300 microsecond so you see that uh, they have two uh, parameter the, uh, the front time and then the decay time uh, the standard waveform shape that is used internationally to generate lightning impulses uh, in the lab has T1 value of 1.2 microsecond and T2 value of 50 microsecond, typically known as 1.2 slash 50 microsecond. Um, so, so this is it. Uh, one point. This is the front time and then this is the decay time. Okay. Front time, decay time. So. This is the front time, this is the decay time. Right. Um, so the front time is uh, here, this is the front time. 1.2 microsecond for the voltage to reach from 0 to 100%. Right. And then uh, the decay time is 50 microseconds this is for the system to reach to decay to 50% of the magnitude so it takes 50 microseconds right so you can see this is very very uh, appear in, in the system very short time if you can see this is the operating operating voltage and this is the impulse that appear in the system all right so typically known as 1.2 dash 50 front time the uh, 1.2 dash 50 front time and decay time um, i think in the previous slide uh, i did not uh, i don't think you can see the cursor here i have cursor here uh, but since that i need to click on the mouse for the cursor to appear on your video uh, so previously i did not press on the cursor you did so you did not see the the cursor on your video okay um, um, so ffo are higher magnitude than the other uh, types so we have seen the the chart before the figure before all right most surges are generated by negative polarity downward lightning flashes uh, in contrast positive strikes generally have a long front time waveform far time longer however uh, these are uh, not usually happens right most uh, you can only most of the time you will have, uh, appear negative polarity downward lightning flashes right um so as you can see this is from the table of iec 60071-2 this is the lightning impulse test the the typical or the standard shape or pattern of the lightning impulse or the fast front over voltages um t1 
1.2 microseconds and then T2 the decay time from 0 to here takes 50 microseconds 50 microseconds for it to increase and decay reaching 50 percent right end of session thank you very much